Hi guys, I've been digging a little bit into information about Archeria and I wanted to share this information with you. There's a lot, there's a lot which you can find. It's really interesting, but it is somehow hard to find. And I think I'm ready to give you some information. Of course, this is not medical, professional medical advice. This is just what I found on the internet, but it's really, really interesting. And it's not most of the information is not visible to people right away when just doing a little bit of research but when you dig a little bit deeper you you really find interesting information so yeah the question actually which i want to discuss today is if people have ever been recovered from archeria and yeah it is really difficult to find i mean when you just google for that you probably won't find anything so in 99 percent of the cases whenever you find something about that it will tell you that it is irreversible this i have found just by chance when i was googling for something else and i read the whole thing and this is not just like some normal paper i mean this is in the u.s national library of medicine national institute of health so i think whatever is published here is probably pretty true so of course this is not from us looks like it's from asia maybe south korea japan or whatsoever so they're talking about a case of arteria following colloidal silver ingestion so the case is about a 73 year old male visited our clinic with a two-year history of slate gray colored pigmentation or of the face one year previously he had visited our clinic with blurish gray discoloration of his entire face at this time we recommended further evaluation for his skin lesion but he refused and stopped visiting our clinic he later returned because of discoloration began getting lighter and spreading so then they found uh, this bronze color pigmentation yeah when they f when they questioned him regarding use of alternate medication then he revealed that uh, he has ingested colloidal silver on occasions for the last for for at least the last five years and then they were digging a little bit deeper and they they finally uh, diagnosed him with uh, arteria so the findings what they had is uh, it's a little bit strange here what, what they find in the urine is 12.8 milligrams per liter and they have uh, somehow like a total per day but that's uh, <laughs> would be 10 liters of urine per day so i think that's not the case when we read the whole thing here then it is very obvious that they mean or they're talking about a total intake of colloidal silver of, of around 153 mil micrograms per day the really strange thing is that they say the ingested water so obviously the silver water had uh, 0 0.15 micrograms per milliliter which would be equal to 0 0.15 ppm and they say he has bought this as a I think colloidal silver uh, solution so or suspension i mean nobody sells uh colloidal silver suspension with 0 0.15 ppm so either it was something else or the uh, seller just sold him something which was not uh, properly made or this is really weird here this is really really strange for me and unusual and yeah there's one th one more thing which we find here we estimated that this uh, that the mean amount of daily in ingested colloidal silver to achieve a concentration of the 0 0.15 microgram per milliliter is 700 milliliters this gives one the idea the total amount of ingested colloidal silver for the last uh, five years comes to 0 0.2 grams when we uh, compare this to the uh, recommended maximum dose or like uh, yeah safe dose uh, of daily colloidal silver intake 
uh, then it is actually below I mean we uh, for an average person of let's say 70 kilogram uh, we come to 350 micrograms per day and if we do this for three years we would be around 0 0.3 grams so if I'm not wrong, this would be considered as a still safe dose uh, regarding to EPA standards. So, but uh, they are not going really into detail, unfortunately, uh, what kind of colloidal silver he was intaking. So we have no clue if it was silver salts. When we go and re do a lot of research, a lot of people are saying that Arturia is only related to really badly made colloidal silver or silver salts or extremely high dose, but I've never seen a zero point two grams or five years causing such things but uh, we never know i mean there's probably not an any kind of absolutely safe dose here but when you think about how many people are taking colloidal silver on a daily basis some people are saying 10 million american people are using that on a daily basis for me that number seems to be a little bit high but probably there are a lot and when we think about the number of cases of Acheria then it's probably pretty low I come to that a little bit later on so what I wanted to show you here that's the final conclusion or final thing here actually based on these results this case was diagnosed with Acheria we advised the patient to discontinue the ingestion of silver and, and encouraged him to use sunscreen sun protection to help prevent further skin discoloration after adopting these practices the patient's condition improved rapidly or unfortunately they don't talk specifically about the skin problem or the discoloration but probably when they are talking about the patient's condition this is meant to be it so it looks like he recovered and yeah there's uh, additional information down here uh, saying the same thing the subject evaluated here showed some improvement after this continuing use of the product staying away from the sunlight furthermore no aggravation of the condition was observed after uh, seizing the use of colloidal silver it, 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 it's a little bit i mean the sense uh, I mean the sentence is not really equal to the thing above but it says actually it has improved but it's it's a little bit weird that that uh, I mean that's supposed to be a medical doctor or like a scientist or whatsoever whoever wrote this thing and here it says showed some improvement and above we had the fast improvement yeah here we have to think the patient's condition improved rapidly so a little bit strange yeah so it looks actually that a lot of pages about that are really dishonest i mean this is just a sample like healthline.com very famous and most pages like this they are saying like Algeria has no cure however recent trials with laser treatments are proving to be promising for helping skin discoloration and so on but um, actually still it has no cure and that looks somehow really dishonest when we read about this guy who just dis discontinued the intake of colloidal silver and got rid of the problems so i'm not saying that this will happen in every case but i just wanted to give you some hope and to show you some evidence that this really can happen so what i found a little bit strange here or maybe that it's really an indication of that the silver has been accumulated in his body here we when we do a little bit of mass here in chested water i mean they were talking about 700 milliliters when we do the mass we come off a total of about 100 micro 
grams in total with the 700 milliliters and in the urine they say they have found only about 12 micrograms per liter so yeah usually there's not much more than probably one liter per day so 100 uh, 100 micrograms have been going in and 12 only 12 micrograms have left his body i mean there's not only the urine there's also um on the other end <laughs> not going into detail yeah this especially when you have longer intake of colloidal silver there's uh, a lot uh, going the other way out of your body and of course they have not measuring this only so it, it's a little bit difficult to tell they have other studies being made about that and i think the most famous study was done by roger altman it's it's really still very famous he has been going really really into detail and he has made a long study about that and so he came to this conclusion he measured the total silver ingested 2.34 milligram i think over that was uh, 24 hours, uh, yeah, 2.34, that's a lot actually, uh, very high uh, value, I mean much more than most people uh, intake, about 10 times more than the EPA standard, but uh, anyway, let's go into the numbers, the intake was 2.3 milligram and the out, the thing which went out uh, was in total even more, so probably it was there was a little bit uh, variation in his consumption or he had uh, a lot of water uh, like tap water which already had a lot of colloidal silver but I mean the values would be extremely high but there was probably more like variation or there was some error in his research I, I don't know but uh, I mean he really concluded that if you yeah here we have it I think at the end that's uh, the conclusion of his study in Chesnov properly made colloidal silver does not result in silver accumulation in the body. There is no evidence that silver deposits significantly in hair or fingernails and in fact the data supports the conclusion that after taking more than 2 mg of colloidal silver per day for several months silver seems to be purged from the body mostly through urine at about the same rate at which it is consumed and I mean they are really talking about a lot of colloidal silver 2.3 milligrams that's really a lot so even uh, in his final final statement here he says the completion of th this study marks the first real step toward conclusion evidence that the risk of colloidal silver toxicity is negligible. Uh, it can be stated uh, with extreme confidence that a body under normal conditions does not retain colloidal silver in bodily tissues in any form, especially in day. If the daily colloidal silver consumption is two milligram or less, which means uh, that's uh, 12 ounces. That's a lot. 12 ounces or five ppm of colloidal silver for a reasonable period of time i mean that's not me thing that's uh, just the uh, roger altman altman study and of course there is evidence that there are some cases of arteria or around but the crazy thing is actually when we go to uh, web md which is or uh, yeah i was supposed to be a really good source of good information i mean yeah probably it's sponsored by big pharma but uh, at least we get some really good information but here when we go to arturia they say only the only thing which they mentioned is causes they are talking about colloidal silver you might get arturia if you take dietary supplements that contain silver use medications such as eye drops and so on it contains silver and so on they are talking only about silver nothing nothing else this is crazy i mean that's web md that was supposed to be for me a really reliable source of information but when we dig a little bit deeper yeah we find the following thing uh, at uh, helio or whatever helio <laughs> also difficult word yeah for me it's a tough day 
uh, we find this blue man syndrome. Blue man syndrome, also known as Algeria, can occur from long term a myodarone or whatever that is. That's a, a, a really uh, medication which I've never heard use. Uh, however, was initially seen in silver toxicity. Significant bluish discoloration of the skin can can is skin can is seen discontinuing this medication therapy frequently improves the discoloration the etiology is not clear so really really weird that this was not mentioned in the webmd article isn't that so and it's not the, not the only page which mentions this med medication that's uh, this thing is something which you can find on many pages so why is webmd not reporting about that that sounds to be really dishonest and uh, discredits really the WebMD page in my personal uh, opinion. By the way, another really interesting page I found, that's the sciencedirect.com. I don't know uh, who has done this, but there are a lot of studies about Arturia and of course, yeah, maybe it's sponsored by Big Pharma, I don't know, but anyway, we find uh, quite some cases about arteria caused by colloidal silver. I think everything here uh, mentioned uh, they say is, call, uh, is caused by uh, some kind of heavy metals or colloidal silver intake. Yeah, it's really interesting. I will definitely put down the link to all the things which I have found so you can read everything and build your own opinion on that and but as you can see i mean there are quite some cases but there are not hundreds of cases and not thousands and not tens of thousands or something like that they are talking about cases like 40 or at least 10 20 30 40 years ago so it seems that probably there are not many more cases around and how crazy is that when we compare these two other numbers and I mean, that's not just any page, that's cnbc.com and they say the third leading cause of death in US. Most doctors don't want you to know about this is a recent John Hopkins study. I mean, that's John Hopkins, that's the leading data provider for the coronavirus, I think, numbers. Uh, a recent John Hopkins study claims more than 250,000 people in the US die every year from medical errors. Other reports claim the numbers can be as high as 440,000 and I have even found higher numbers. And that's the headlice.org and they are talking about the total number of iatrogenic deaths show uh, the yeah, number of 783,000 numbers of deaths I mean yeah deaths caused by medical doctors in the United States and in 2001 the heart disease annual rate heart disease annual death rate was only 699,000 so that uh, would make it actually the number one cause of death in US uh, before everything else, before heart disease, before cancer, bef be before e everything, any or anything else. Isn't that crazy? So there are a lot of people are freaking out about this Arturia. This may be 10, 20, 30, maybe it's, there are 100 cases. I'm not saying it's not existing. I mean, if he if it hits you, it, 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 it's really bad. But I've heard many people saying, yeah, rather rather blue than this. I mean, yeah, that that's something. And yeah, and I mean, we see these numbers here. We see this maybe 
10, 20 or maybe 100 cases of Arturia. So, I mean, I just wanted to give you the real numbers to put this in perspective. Nothing is really 100% safe if you want to cross the street, even if you're looking left and right. You're not sure that you reach the other end safely. <laughs> Anything can happen. You can hit, uh, get hit by a plane, by a helicopter, by a meteorite or whatsoever. Yeah, so my idea is for the video today was not to give you any kind of advice because I'm again I'm not a medical doctor I'm not a scientist I'm not any kind of professional health person I just wanted to give you the numbers and the source and the foundation and everything uh, so you can make your own uh, mind you can make your own decision find out what you do and then it's your decision what you what you want to do there's always a risk in life and you it's just a matter of how likely it is and how likely the chances of being successfully healed or chance is to get sick from ever from anything so you see definitely there's even a huge chance that when when you go to your medical doctor or into hospital that's a real high number i mean if this is really the case it affects one out of 300 people in us every year that's that's something yeah even if it's only i mean the number according to this study uh, from john hopkins study but uh, that's that's a lot and uh, so yeah that's it actually for now I think uh, that's it for the moment 23 minutes or yeah at least around 20 minutes that's enough and I hope I was able to help you a little bit with this video if you have any questions or comments or whatever you have whatever you think please write everything down into the feedback area I'm always happy to talk about these things and if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe my channel thanks for watching and see you next time